I'm just gonna jam it in there this time. All right, that was impressive. This engine is such a beautiful, handcrafted, precision piece of machinery, straight from China. And if there's one thing that I learned from Whistling Diesel is that you can learn a lot by destroying nice things. I don't see why this engine should be an exception to that. This is the new M12 mini gasoline engine from the very, very kind folks at Sterling Engine Kit. I'm told that this engine is the best of the best and can handle just about anything. That's a really bold claim that I'm about to put to the test. Since I'm told this is a brand new engine, I figured blowing it up would be a perfect introduction into its existence. Let's not waste any time and get right into it. First, before getting into anything really extreme, I wanna start this engine up on gasoline, which is what it was designed for. Let it run and break in and get acclimatized to the Chicago air. This did come from the other side of the world. I need three things, oil, gas, and water, because it's water cooled. And I looked everywhere in the manual and I can't see anywhere where it says where you put the water or the oil. The gas goes right here in this little tank. And I'm assuming that the water goes in this reservoir that kind of sits right on top of the head, kind of like an old school locomotive. I'm guessing that the oil gets added to the block like a cruise ship from 1835. Let's see, let's look inside there. Yep, that sure looks like it's the crankcase. I wanna blow this engine up with mechanical failure. I don't want the engine to seize. So I wanna just make sure I'm putting the oil in the right spot. Plenty of oil. We do not wanna seize this engine. Oh, it looks great, look at all that oil in there. Definitely is a cool little engine. I'm gonna be sad when I have to say goodbye. I have it all filled up with oil, water, and gas. But before starting this, I just wanna give you a quick overview for those that might not be familiar with this type of combustion engine. This is the spark plug. I'll come back to that in a minute. These are the flywheels, which keep the engine rotating in between cycles. So this is a four cycle. So you have a intake stroke, compression stroke, power stroke and exhaust stroke. So those three other strokes don't make power, only the power stroke does. And some of that energy is reserved in these flywheels, which keeps the engine running. This is the crankcase. This is the gas tank. This is the cooling tank. It just transfers heat by contact. You just fill this up with water and this is the cylinder here. The cylinder heats up that reservoir and that's how it cools the engine. This is the carburetor, which mixes the air and the fuel. And coming on to the other side, everything is exposed. So these are the push rods. This is the intake push rod, exhaust push rod, the rocker arms, valve springs. You can see the cam pushing those valves open via the push rods. That's just like a push rod V8 or something like that. This is a little cute little muffler. And one last thing I wanna show you is this cute little tiny little spark plug. That thing is tiny. So that's it. I'm gonna throw this back together and get this thing fired up. I used to call that panther piss. Oh. Looks like I might have put a little bit too much oil in there. Right there. That's as good as I could get it to run. More in is lean, more out is rich. Almost sounds like a hit or miss engine. That was this engine's first run on gasoline. It wasn't really what I expected. It sounded kind of like a hit or miss engine. And I know what everybody's gonna say, I was running it too rich or too lean, but I adjusted the mixture right there to where it was running perfectly and it still sounded like a hit or miss engine. But 
Gasoline is not gonna be the fuel that I use to blow this engine up. Earlier today, I posted a community post asking people what fuel they wanted to see me use in this engine to blow it up. So I'm gonna check that first, run the fuel that everybody wants to see me use. Then I'm gonna move into the fuel that I wanna use which I think is gonna surprise everybody. Looks like nitromethane is gonna be our next fuel. That's what everybody wants to see. Before running this on nitro, I wanna open it up and just try to figure out why this engine is running like crap. I think I might even see the problem here because of that hole in the head for the spark plug design. I would imagine that the flame propagation out of that hole is uh, a lot slower than you would see in a modern engine. Here we go. The antique replica old school engine running nitromethane. Definitely needs forced induction. Before moving away from the nitro into the coolest part of this video, I wanna try one more thing. I wanna replicate turbocharging or supercharging by injecting pure oxygen right into the carburetor of this engine with the nitromethane. I don't think it's gonna blow, but I think it might sound uh, supercharged. Here goes the run on uh, nitromethane with oxygen. Nice. Looks like the engine loved that oxygen to the point where this little thing was screaming. I doubt that this was designed to handle that type of RPM because now I tried to start it afterwards and it won't start. So I removed the spark plug from the cylinder head yet again to, I don't know, let it cool off or do something. It seems to work if you take it out and then put it back in. But the one thing that I did notice apart from that is check this out. So after that last run, it looks like the crankshaft bearings are going bad. And if you look inside there, you can see like that little cover. There's a camshaft underneath that, that I really don't care about, that operates these valves. It seems like the lifters don't have the same travel that they did before. I don't know if the camshaft's already getting worn down or maybe this thing just doesn't use oil. I put some oil in the crankcase. Seems to be coming out of that camshaft cover, but uh, yeah, it just doesn't have the same travel. So I don't think this is gonna make it through. For this next test, which is the most exciting part of this video for me, I wanna introduce Engine DIY to Sterling Kit. I think you may have met before, but I bet you didn't know you were gonna have a face-off, did you? This is the oxy hydrogen generator from Engine DIY that I'm going to use to produce the hydrogen and oxygen that's gonna clear that little engine's throat. I'm gonna do a full episode on this in the very near future, but for now, I'm just gonna fill it with water plug it in and let it do its thing because I know that this little engine cannot wait for this hydrogen oxygen mix. All right, here we go. Here's the run on hydrogen and oxygen.
Well, I guess it didn't blow up. The one thing I did notice is it ran a lot better on hydrogen than it did gas, and there was absolutely no smoke. That's because the byproduct of burning hydrogen and oxygen is water, so that makes perfect sense. Next thing, I'm gonna use oxygen acetylene. What I've been waiting for. Oh man, you ready for this little engine? I don't think you are. I'm gonna start it up on hydrogen and then I'm gonna switch over to the oxygen acetylene mix. Here we go. And look at how easy that starts up with hydrogen. Uh-oh, something happened. I think it seized up. Oh no. Oh no, the engine seized. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know, let's open it up, see what kind of damage we find. Wow, that cylinder head definitely looks a lot better than it did before. See, look at how loose those valves are in there. And I know this is just a model engine. A lot of people are gonna be like, why are you criticizing somebody's work? But people criticize my work all the time. It seems to kind of get stuck. That's it, it won't go into the bottom of the stroke. It just kind of stops right there. All right, let's open up this crane case. Oh man, I don't know what all that is in there. It's weird, it's like, I don't know what that is. It seems like a whole bunch, it seems like water. This crane case is full of water. Where did all that water come from? Maybe from burning hydrogen? That's the weirdest thing. The whole crankcase is full of water. Well, that's not good lubrication. Something's hitting in there. That's strange. I'm gonna remove the connecting rod cap screws and just pull the entire piston and the connecting rod out. The other end, let's see what happened. What the heck? No, I can't get it out though. Something has happened to the piston. All right, there we go. Oh, I see exactly what happened. If we look inside the cylinder sleeve, we can see exactly why the engine seized. It looks like there was a little bit of impurity in the metal or something that got hot and just kind of popped up. And the clearance is so tight here, it just seized the piston. And the fact that all that water was in the crankcase instead of oil, I mean, that didn't help the uh, matter either. Looking at the piston, I can see that this little, I don't know, kind of make-do piston ring. It's like some type of silicone rubber. This is melted, I guess. But no worries. I got some new silicone piston rings slash O-rings. I'm going to re-ring this piston, put it all back together, and give it another shot. This time I'm going to go with some full synthetic oil. That way, hopefully, we don't have to worry about lubrication problems. Insert the entire sleeve into the engine. There's not that much wear for it being brass and not having sufficient oil. But this time, I am going to put a little bit of oil. There we go. It's working again. Look at that compression. Get some oil in the crankcase. Synthetic oil. All lubed up. Nice and smooth. Here it goes, second time around. I'm gonna start it on gasoline first this time, turn on the oxygen acetylene, and inject much as I can. I do want it to blow up. So this is my last and final attempt. I hope it blows to pieces. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna open the oxygen acetylene all the way much as I can. Alright, here it goes. High speed camera rolling. I'm just going to jam it in there this time. Alright, that was impressive. Thank you.
That was so fantastic. I had to contain myself. Even the fuel tank became a geyser. It just started squirting out of the gas tank under pressure. I don't know why that was, but you can see the engine was really struggling as the RPM got up there. I can see exactly what blew on this engine. It looks like the gas started escaping from the valve guide and burning outside the engine, heating up that little spring to the point where it just disintegrates and gets thrown into the air. I mean, look at those sparks. It looks like this was a somewhat success, successful on the terms of uh, just being chaotic, which is what I love. And so does the high speed camera because the more chaotic it is, the cooler it looks. It didn't blow apart, but I know this is based off of a really old engine design. But yeah, that was interesting. I'm gonna leave a link to this engine in the description below if you wanna buy it. Now you know that it will survive oxygen acetylene i mean i didn't even know that so i'm gonna get going now i gotta figure out how to get a gopro inside of this tire and roast them that's the next video right after this one i'm gonna just hold the accelerator until they blow up or something else happens first so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe let's do it acetylene oxygen high speed camera rolling here we go Cut it. Cut the high speed camera.